Hello and welcome back to my allotment here in Nottingham. We're inside my shed. It's not too cold out there today and we've got a few things to do on the plot. This month it's been another wet one. Um, we've had weeks and weeks of rain. I feel like a broken record. I've been saying this every month now but it's led to some pretty severe flooding in some areas, um, particularly in Derbyshire, Doncaster and um, Gloucestershire, I think. Um, so it's been pretty bad, but hopefully we've had a few dry days this week, so it might be letting off for a little while. But my heart goes out to anybody that's had their homes or allotments affected by the flooding. We've got a few things to do on the plot today. Um, as you know, I don't get here that often anymore because of the short days. It gets dark at about four o'clock and so um, yeah I just got to try and cram as much into the days when I actually have some good conditions to work in like today so it's not too cold it's a bit drizzly but it's not raining which is a plus so things I'll be doing today I've got some dahlias to lift in my raised bed and I've also got the dahlias in the long border to cut back and mulch if I get all that done I'll be planting some daffodil bulbs in their place and then I'll give you a short tour at the end. I've done quite a bit of shopping this month. Um, I've got a few fruit trees and bushes as well that I'll show you, but these boxes here are my spring bulbs. So I thought I'll quickly run through and show you what I've got to plant because I'm a little bit overwhelmed. There's a, quite a few bulbs here. Anyway, let's go for it. So I've got some allium bulbs. These are purple sensation. So these are the really big, ball like flowers and they are going to grow about this big <laughs> and I'm going to I think I'm going to plant them in front of my carrot bed I think they'll look really good there so I've got a few of these um, I actually picked them up these were reduced down to £1.50 each I also bought some crocus these are 20 a 20 pack are these the big ones or the little ones anyway i've got a few of those and then we come on to the daffodils and tulips now this box is actually all one variety of of daffodil and it's called cheerfulness and uh, you might remember it before i do already grow it it's one of my favorites and uh, these were on a good offer so i bought them online had them delivered and I'm going to cram full my raised bed with these daffodil bulbs and they've got like a, a double flower and they smell so nice so I'm growing them not just for the allotment but also for cutting and taking home. Unlike tulip bulbs daffodils are toxic which means that the squirrels, rats, mice won't be eating any of my daffodil bulbs which is why I have quite so many because I'm just going to cram them in all areas because I know that the one thing that the rats and mice aren't going to eat because I've had such a problem with them this year. Going into my next box are tulips and I probably shouldn't have bought this many and I'm not going to plant any of these now, not in my beds anyway, because I know they'll just get eaten. So we've got Tulip uh, Apricot Beauty. I bought some parrot tulips as well. This one's called Super Parrot and I love the way that these open and they seem to last for weeks and weeks and they'll slowly open to this amazing textured and this one's got some really striking colours. I'm not quite sure which one Super Parrot is. Oh yeah, as part of my order, I got some free Muscari bulbs. So these will be a mixture of sort of blues, whites and purple colours. I'm going to put them into a pot, I think. More Apricot Beauty. And pots are my plan for the tulips as well. I think I mentioned it in last month's video, but I'm going to perhaps make some bulb lasagnas where you put different bulbs in different layers so that you get um, succession of spring flowers. So I'll start with tulips on the bottom, then daffodils and then crocus. Mango charm. Tulip poco loco. And also as part of my order I got some mixed long stemmed tulips of different colours and they're all i don't i don't really like doing the whole different colors so there's gonna be like reds oranges yellows purples and pinks all mixed up together um i'll probably put them in some pots and keep them at home maybe put them by the door 
This one's called Irene Parrot. Again, all of these are going to go into pots. I bought quite a few, haven't I? <laughs> okay, the rest are just duplicates, but you can see I've got quite a lot of bulbs to plant. Um, yeah, I've also got to show you two blueberry bushes and an apple tree, but they're sheltering in the polytunnel at the moment, so when we go on a little tour, I'll show you those when we get there. But since the weather's nice and I've probably got about three hours of daylight left, uh, we're going to pop outside and sort out those dahlias, so let's go! They don't look quite so pretty anymore, do they? <laughs> we had a frost, or a couple of frosts over the last few weeks, which is why all of the foliage is blackened, the flower buds have blackened, there's no more flowers to open, that's it now, they're completely done. So it's time for me to lift these ones, and the reason I'm doing that is because I've got some taller ones growing at the front, and some shorter ones at the back so I need to swap them around but we lift them now store them over winter and then replant them in late spring so what I'm going to do now is cut them back to about four or six inches above the ground level dig them out of the ground really carefully not to damage them tubers I'll dust off as much of the loose compost as I can and then I'm going to turn them upside down and store them in my home where it's warm and dry for a couple of weeks to get them nice and dry before I then put them in my basement to store over winter where it's much cooler. I'm really quite um, excited to see just how big the tuber systems are growing underground because um, one of them in particular, the Wizard of Oz, which is my favourite, was already pretty big when I put it in. So another growing season later, I think it's going to need dividing, which is great because it just means that I'm going to have even more of my favourite flowers next year for free. So I'm going to get some gloves on, get some tools ready and see what's going on under there. Well, that's all of my dahlias lifted from this area. I just need to cut back the stems a little bit more and um, they're in really good condition and I'm surprised that they haven't actually rotted in all this wet weather that we've had. But this is my Wizard of Oz. It's absolutely enormous. Oh, it's so heavy I can barely lift it. I might actually just put it down. There we go. Um, so I'm gonna cut these back just a little bit more and then take them home, let them dry off a little bit, dust off a bit more of the soil that's around them. I've made sure there's no worms in there, they're back into the raised bed. And I think the most important thing is just to remember to keep them labelled. You'll see I've got all the labels here, which I actually planted next to them, and they haven't rubbed off. I know which one's which, so when it comes to replanting them next spring, I'll know which one it is going in the right place. Another reason why I've chosen not to lift all of my dahlias is because of the sheer size of the tubers and because they get so big, I mean like that one as well, um, it's difficult to find a pot big enough to um, grow them in uh, without you know, spending a lot of money. So these are the only ones that I'm really going to lift. Um, so now I need to just pop them in some boxes so I can put them in my car and then move over to the other border and cut those ones back. It's really important that they're actually dried before you put them into storage, otherwise they could rot and you don't want them to be stored somewhere too warm because they need to stay dormant, they need to stay cool and dark and have a little winter sleep. I found that my basement worked fine last year but I know I'm lucky to have one here in the UK, not many houses have basements, uh, my block of flats does, so you might have a cold garage or somewhere like that, you just want it to be frost free really and not have any source of heating but for more tips on growing dahlias storing them do check out zoe at swan cottage flowers on instagram and her blog and her website because she is an amazing woman she's so generous with all the advice that she gives remember i'm not an expert this is just how i'm doing it this year well you might be able to see behind me that i've already cut back the dahlias in this corner and i've put a layer of cardboard down before topping it with wood chip and the reason that I've put the cardboard down first is basically just to create a barrier because I don't want the wood chip mixing with the soil because it's known that as wood chip breaks down it actually pulls nitrogen from the soil and then depletes the nutrients in your soil for that following year 
So I don't want that to happen, which is why I've created an extra layer, like a barrier. And then come springtime, as the dahlias hopefully start to emerge, I can always just push that cardboard and wood chip to the back if I want to. It is a bit of a risk doing the mulching trick. I know most people who do this are much further south in the country, um, but hopefully that cardboard's gonna create an extra layer of insulation and fingers crossed we'll have some dahlias next year. But there's a good chance they might die, the frost or the, the rain might get to them, but my soil is quite free draining, so hopefully they won't rot. But if they do die, then it's just an opportunity to try something new next year. And to be honest, I don't feel like I had the full impact that I wanted with these this year in this long border. It wasn't quite as statement and showy as I wanted it to be. And that's probably because our summer wasn't very warm for very long. Um, so there's an opportunity to try lots of other different things next year if they don't survive the winter months, so we'll see. It's about half past three now and the light levels are dropping significantly. So let's have a little look around the plot and I'll show you some new things that I've bought as well as what's growing and I might harvest some carrots as well. Alright, let's see what's going on. Well, can you see my paths? They've all been wood chipped now and it's looking a lot neater. I whipped round and got all the perennial weeds out before I put it down, but it just makes it look so much better. Now I need to top up the bird feeders before I leave this evening, but they've been really enjoying them. Now down here I actually sowed some broad beans, a field bean, sorry, which is a green manure, but they haven't come up yet as well as the other patch and I'm worried that the rodents have got to them. Going down the plot, it's all dying back now. The autumn fruiting raspberries there, they've finished. All the leaves have fallen off the apple tree. I really need to tidy up that section over winter. And going down into the wildlife corner. Well, I've still seen a few robins enjoying the bird bath, despite the cold temperatures. And yeah, that's how it is looking. <laughs> do still have a couple of flowers here and there. Under the apple tree, I do have quite a few brambles that have popped up. So I need to dig those out over winter before spring. Well, as you know, there's not much growing at this time of the year, but the plot is looking pretty neat. And I'm gonna harvest some carrots. Oh, look, all the nasturtiums have died. That's pretty sad. Let's get some carrots. Whoa! Oh my God! That is enormous. That's a red samurai. Look at that colour compared to the orange. Oh my god, that's the longest carrot I've ever grown. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. It smells, oh it smells good too. Moving away from the excitement of my carrots, I bought this. It's an old water tank and it does have a drainage hole in the bottom and I think I'm going to plant some flowers in it. I'll probably put some daffodils in it but I picked it up from Facebook Marketplace for £20 which I thought was a pretty good price and I just love the grey colour and I'm not sure where it's going to go yet on the allotment but it's going to be a nice little planter to play with. Now over here, I've actually planted some garlic in there. I picked out the biggest bulbs from the harvest of this year's crop and I planted some of those. They are Red Duke and Cork White. Little corners still looking good. Got some evergreens in here and the ferns, they're still hanging on. So this border I still need to finish off before I go home and put all more wood chip down. I'll be doing that as it gets dark, I imagine. 
Um, let's move down here. Some daffodils. I won't be planting them today. Better angle. Right, so in this corner I actually planted some field beans. But they haven't come up at all. And I think I can see little holes. I think the rodents have been at them. Oops. But they've been in for... Oh, look. Dandelion. They've been in for about four or five weeks. So I don't think it's a germination problem. They've definitely been eaten. Which is really quite frustrating because those field beans are going to protect this patch over winter. But now I'm just going to sort of mulch it probably with some well rotted manure or some spent compost but I've still got lots of leeks to pick they're a bit rusty the parsnips I haven't harvested yet but the green manure that I sowed in this area which is the mustard has been quite battered because of the heavy rain but hopefully it'll perk up a bit we'll have to see wow it is getting dark okay I best hurry let's go into the poly tunnel next Oh yeah, so there's the dahlia bed. I've got some bags of daffodils on there to go in, but I won't have time to do that today. Um, but at least the dahlias are out. Well, there's nothing growing, so there's not much to show you. Ooh. The sweet peas that I sowed have not yet come up. And it's basically the same. Oh yes, but I do have these. Oh, that's a sorrel that I've just moved. This here is a blueberry and it's called, let me find the label, so this one's pink sapphire so the berries are actually pink on this blueberry and I have another one that's called aurora which is a normal blue coloured blueberry and I'll be planting these um, probably in a pot because blueberries like ericaceous compost I like it quite acidic so I need to put them in a pot and then put that pot where my old black currant bush was but I need to get some compost which is why they're in here still and I'm just keeping them watered they'll be fine for a little while but I do want to get them in before winter really hits and this is a baby apple tree <laughs> it's called apple teeny and it's one that I actually won um, as part of a giveaway. I didn't actually enter it, but my friend did and he tagged me. Thank you very much Derek on Instagram who also lives in Nottingham. So this is an apple teeny and it's a, quite a dwarf tree apparently. 1.5 meters it grows to and the apples I think are quite small but obviously it's going to be a few years until this tree produces any fruit. I've still got lots of scotch bonnets in here and I need to go to Zorin's greenhouse and harvest some more chilies from there. But I've got some pots in here that I need to redo. I'm gonna layer some bulbs in here. Oh, there's a slug. Ugh. Ew, 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 ew. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, so I need to take out the pelagoniums in here and overwinter them and just redo this pot for winter and spring. Well, excuse the mess as I'm still working on that area and on the bottom of the allotment. This section right at the back behind the bench is where I'm going to be working hopefully over the winter months and try and transform this area a little bit and get it really tidied up on the edges or sides of the shed. But here it is at about four o'clock. <laughs> at the end of November, it's the 23rd today, 2019. Right, well I'm not going to head back into the shed because I've still got that border to finish wood chipping, um, but it's going to be December soon, over the next week. I've got all of those bulbs to plant, that's my next priority, so next weekend getting all of the bulbs in. And then I've got my winter project to start on, so I'm still going to be quite busy here in the plot. Thanks for joining me, thanks for watching, liking and subscribing and I'll see you on the next episode. By the way, I've got mud on my face, um, that's not what I was about to say. Um, I'm going to do a Christmas Q&A, hopefully, next month for my video. So I need your questions please, what do you want to know about me, about my allotments, about what I grow, how I grow or any advice that you might like. Um, please ask away in the comments below and in next month's video I'll try and answer as many as I can.